Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ASME, Section 2, Part A. Reading Specification, for SA-516, SA-516M, Part 2. We have, all these courses available, on our Thinkific platform. To learn, more about these courses, register with the link given, in the description. Now coming to the next clause, which is clause 5, related to heat treatment. There are a few takeaways from this. And the first part is related to your, if you have less than 40 mm thickness. Okay, if your plate you are ordering, which is having 40 or less thickness, you can order it as as rolled. You don't need to normalize it. Normalizing requirement is not there. Still, if you want, definitely you can do it because normalizing will make it better. But definitely the cost is involved, right? So unless it is required, nobody will like to go for normalizing because cost is a very important factor. So if it is less than 40, guys, remember that we can order it in as rolled condition. If my plate thickness is more than 40, then I cannot order it as as rolled, you know. Even if you don't write anything, the mill will produce it as a normalized condition because it is a code requirement. You cannot avoid it. Okay. So even if you don't specify, it will be ordered as normalized. Okay. Now, if we have impact testing requirement for our job, if you have to perform impact testing, you have done the calculation, MDMT, is uh, you know not qualifying so you have to do impact testing so if it is already concluded in that case normalizing is required for all thickness whatever you order even a 10 mm plate you will have to go for normalized okay i hope you got that this is a very uh, important point and you should remember it you don't have to you know so less than 40 we can order as rolled Greater than 40 mm shall be normalized. And if there is impact testing requirement, then whatever thickness I am using, it has to be normalized irrespective of thickness. Okay. Now coming to the chemical composition. There was one question related to chemical composition also. So if you see here, uh, no, if you might have seen any time this chemical composition table, if you see the carbon is the main element for carbon steel okay the name itself is carbon steel so carbon is main element and if you see the variation of carbon also is there depending upon the different thicknesses if we have 12.5 and under we have different chemical composition if i have over 200 mm plate i have different chemical composition and if you see the variation trend if we go if my thickness is of the plate is increasing the carbon requirement is also increasing okay so that is the trend you don't have to remember the values you know uh just if you want to remember just for grade 70 just for a reference purpose you can remember that 0 0.28 0 0.27 that is the normally the uh you know carbon requirement and if you see this is the max you know this is the maximum requirement not minimum so even if the carbon is less like 0 0.08 and we have grade 70 and it is meeting the tensile and yield stress requirement, we can accept it. Okay. So that is a very important point. That is the max which is mentioned here. So 0.27 to 0 0.31, that is the normal and the maximum. You can have a minimum value. Okay. Uh, now uh, we have other elements we have not highlighted because that is not required just to remember that there is a manganese also phosphorus sulfur silicon all these things are there you know you might have also seen a uh, chemical composition varying in terms of heat analysis and product analysis sometimes there are two different values will be given one will be based on heat analysis second will be based on product analysis so what is the difference so heat analysis, see, when we are making that plate in the mills, you know, the two different times that chemical composition will be measured. One is when it is in 
ladle when it is completely molten state we'll be taking sample and doing the heat analysis so that whatever chemical composition they are getting it will be called as heat analysis now the second time it will be performed when the plate is already made that time the sample will be taken and again that chemical composition will be done there may be slightly variation in those it will be more or less matching but slight variation is expected okay. so other uh, uh, elements which you can notice is phosphorus sulfur and silicon okay moving to the next clause which is tensile strength okay this is very much required for a uh, static equipment design engineer or any design engineer so if you see based on grades your strength is also actually the grades are named after that tensile strength you know if you remember so 485 that is the tensile strength and that is the minimum tensile strength of a sa516 grade 70 steel so 485 sometimes we also call it, it as sa516 grade 485 why because this grade this 485 is the value of tensile strength in mpa 70 is in ksi so when we call grade 70 it is actually the tensile strength of that material in ksi and that is the minimum you cannot go lower you may get higher value when you test okay so like you see now here that example grade 70 minimum tensile strength 70 ksi minimum yield strength is 38 ksi why i'm um, bringing it here because you should remember at least for one material so say five months is grade 70 if you like mpa values you can remember this 485 okay and 260 as yield these two values you should remember 485 mpa is the tensile strength 260 mpa is the yield strength of a carbon steel sa516 grade 70 material okay now moving forward to next see now if you see in sa516 specification you will also see that there are some additional requirements given that will mention if you want to have a char pv notch test we'll have to additionally specify that we want char pv impact test then the mill manufacturer will be doing char pv impact testing also and he will attach the report okay. if you need simulated post weld heat treatment coupon how many of you know uh, how many of you know the sim what is simulated post weld heat treatment coupons anybody of uh, have you heard of or you are aware if you just say yes also that is okay i know most of you might not be okay so seth is seth, seth has heard of it great anybody else jagdish okay sachin great permanent no okay great so see uh uh i hope you understand what is post well heat treatment so to reduce the stresses which have been induced because of welding we perform post weld heat treatment okay and that is also a requirement based on section 8 division 1 for different material it is different it's not like for all the time we have to do it so when it is required you know when that stress post weld heat treatment is required in that case to ensure that after post weld heat treatment you know see that mill has already given me a tested uh specific uh, tested certificate for chemical composition and the strength so i know that my chemical composition may not change because of heat treatment but what about the strength you know what if i did the heat treatment to uh, reduce the induced stresses and reduce the hardness but what if my tensile yield strength has decreased how to make sure that it has not changed right so for that reason that from same product you know that plate if it uh, from the same heat they'll be taking a coupon it will be given same heat treatment what is expected during the 
fabrication of that equipment. So same cycle will be followed and then it will be tested. So after that, it should meet whatever requirement is given in code for that material. And then only it will be accepted as a material for further fabrication. So beforehand, we know that even if we do this heat treatment, nothing is going to you know, be wrong. We will ensure that that strength is already there so we can satisfy that requirement. If you need ultrasonic examination to check whether there are some flaws in that plate, that is also possible. Okay. So we will have to mention these requirements as an additional. And please remember that if you mention these additional requirements, then there will be cost increase. Okay. Because finally, the mill manufacturer has to spend on doing this extra uh, testing for you. I hope you understood this part. To understand material specification completely, do check out our first part of this video. The link is given in the description.